I'm Madeline Gent, and I'm Executive Director of the Associated Artists of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is known for its 90 neighborhoods, but those 90 neighborhoods are consolidated into nine districts. And in each of those nine districts is an incredible variety of life, art, culture, and people. In this series, we're going to examine each of those districts a little bit closer by looking at the work of one artist. In today's episode, we're going to look at the work of painter Bob Bowden. See, the inside of the house, it also echoes this kind of very individualist style and creativity that I think that both my wife and I have. I think it's more Italian than anything. No matter where I go, I'm looking for a composition. If I see something that I think will make a good painting, then I'll go back to it set up and do it if it's safe and if I'm not on somebody's private property and I think uh, the light is going to be uh, a consideration that I can manage and if I don't finish one day I'll go back another time. So uh, that's the way I, I uh, am still working. Well I, I went to Carnegie Tech which is Carnegie Mellon. Uh, graduated with a painting major and uh, then uh, worked in commercial art as a graphic designer and we had our own office, graphic design office for 40 years downtown. And, uh, but I continued to paint the whole time. Well, I had H.G. Hines for a client, but most of it was corporate. It was all corporate work, it wasn't advertising. And occasionally I'll see something that maybe I did 30 or 40 years ago, and I've forgotten that I, I did it. But <laughs> That's great. But I didn't really do anything outside of our region, unless I had a client that had some reason to send me somewhere to do something. And originally I was an abstractionist. So I was painting abstract, non-objective paintings until, I was, until the late 60s. And then I thought I would attempt watercolor, which had always been very difficult uh, to think, how was I going to do it? No one had ever taught me that in school. And once I started to paint with watercolor, then I decided, well, why don't I just try painting on the street? So I did, and then I've been a plain air painter on the street, on site painting for close to 50 years. There's always something every day that's relevant to my art. Uh, either somebody sends me an email, or I'm looking at something, or reading something, or what. I'm uh, painting in Martha's Vineyard uh, pretty much, and uh, I, that's my only real gallery connection. It's there, none in Pittsburgh. Uh, and uh, except a friend of mine has uh, a space over in uh, Larimer that I have about 25 pieces in but uh, I don't know how much longer that building is going to stay the way it is. Well, I, I did exhibit from the time that I graduated from college. I, okay. Every opportunity I had that I thought I might be part of a, a group, I took it. I've been in the Associated Artists for at least 40 years. It has changed radically since I uh, stepped back from it. Radically. And I think about this occasionally, and I think if I was to tell somebody, if they asked me, uh, what do you think I should do? Should I go to art school and try to make my living from it? Uh, I would say they would have to go to a school where you, they would be trained to use the computer to make their art, but they also, in the meantime, while they were doing that, they had to draw. They had to learn how to draw properly and they also had to learn to communicate 
with a client or uh, fellow workers, their colleagues. That's very important. Uh, if they don't learn the language, you know, how to use the English language with communicating with clients, it won't work for them. The computer isn't everything, but they have to use the computer nowadays. Nobody draws anymore. I'm just saying that the discipline of learning how to draw something that you're looking at properly is great because when you have a meeting with a client and they have a problem, say, and they want you as that artist that has a little more insight to solve it for them, you have to actually draw something right in front of them and that's magic for them. And that's, those are the two, those are the three things that any artist should learn how to draw as well as possible, what they're looking at, how to communicate with the possible client, and how to make the computer do what they want it to. I don't know how to make a computer do what I would want it to. I never was interested. I'm interested now, but it's long past the time where I would do it. I painted on the streets of New York, uh, in California, in Florida, done four books of paintings, uh, on-site painting. To me, it's uh, quite challenging to see it in front of you and make it into a painting, rather than try to take a photograph of it and then paint the photograph. Uh, that, so that's, that's kind of where I got to. As a commercial artist, I drew every day for 40 years because this is pre-computer. So everything that we did had to be drawn for the client. Everything. You name it, and we drew it. So my drawing skills really improved as I went along, and my painting skills. And, and so I don't think of my watercolor medium like most watercolors do. I'm more interested in the idea of spatial relationships and shapes. And so it's really not in the typical watercolor technique. It's just more about painting. The other thing I wanted to say about this environment, our neighborhood, is that <clears throat> there are a lot of creative people that live in this area and have as long as we've lived here. So this is really one of the ideal places to live if you're a creative person, I think, in Pittsburgh. Well, our one son is a sculptor, but our son that's a physician is a musician. And he's very good and loves it. And his, he always thought maybe he'd rather be a musician, but then he changed his mind and became a doctor. But uh, they're all a little artistic.